Hello Steelers and welcome to this video in which I'm going to show you how I painted these 50mm British Infantry from Malaya and how I did it quickly. These are from Peter Pig and they're part of their 8th Army range which are perfect for the early war jungle uniforms that the British Army used. This is an infantry platoon for chain of command but you could use these with any other set of rules just by basing them differently. Before we get into the painting, I'll give you a brief synopsis of the Malaya and Singapore campaign with a little bit of background on the uniform itself, so first of all, let's get historical. The Imperial Japanese Army landed on the coast of Malaya and Thailand on the 8th of December 1941. This actually occurred about an hour before the 7th of December attack on Pearl Harbor, but due to the difference in the international dates, we think of it as a different day, although it wasn't. By February of 1942, the Japanese army had performed an incredible feat of driving south through the Malayan jungle and capturing Britain's jewel in their far east colonies, Singapore. Not only was Singapore an important trading and shipping island, it was also a strategic stronghold controlling the Straits of Malacca. Despite this, years of underfunding due to the war in Europe and other problems, the Malayan peninsula was still only in the process of being prepared for defences. There is a myth that the naval guns on the Johor battery located at Singapore were pointing the wrong way when the Japanese attacked. But this is not true, the battery was there to protect the shipping lanes around the island to the south, and the Indian army were to be relied upon to protect the peninsula of Malaya. The Indian soldiers were not trained in jungle warfare and they were not very well supplied, meaning that the veteran Japanese soldiers smashed through their defences, despite a desperate defence by brave men. Local successors could not stem the tide of the Japanese attacks as they advanced down the trunk road towards Kuala Lumpur. The situation quickly turned into a crisis throughout December and January of 1941 and 42, with British and Australian soldiers being diverted from other theatres to try to help. Some of these men spent weeks at sea, travelling to the area, only to find the heat and humidity of Malaya and Singapore a major issue when it actually came to fighting. As the Japanese pressure mounted, the British, Australian and Indian soldiers steadily fell back south trying to take up new positions of hastily dug defensive lines. Again, the lists of defeats quickly outnumbered the list of victories these men experienced, until the defenders were forced back onto Singapore Island itself. One by one, the reservoirs around the city fell to Japanese hands and in order to alleviate the suffering of the civilian population, it was decided that surrender was the only option. Unbeknownst to the defenders, they actually outnumbered the Japanese and the attackers were at the very breaking point of their lines of communication and supply. It's impossible to say what would have happened had the British held out for much longer, but it is tantalising to think of an alternative outcome to the huge defeat suffered at Singapore. Many of the men at Singapore who were captured ended up suffering untold hardships at the hands of the Japanese for the next three years. Amongst the myriad issues facing the British, Australian and Indian soldiers in Malaya were their uniforms. The pre-war uniforms had been designed with service in the northwest frontier of India in mind, meaning that they were a dusty khaki colour and completely out of place for the lush verdant jungles of Malaya. It wouldn't be until 1943 that the famous jungle greens uniforms were introduced, so the men in 1941 were very distinct in what they were wearing. Light shirts and shorts meant that the men were vulnerable to lacerations from plants and also insect bites in the thick jungle, and the traditional artillery boots of the British Army was very prone to rotting in the high humidity. That said, the webbing and small pack were of the modern type, being 37 pattern, which had a larger backpack than before, and ammo pouches for carrying Bren gun ammunition, grenades or bandoliers of rifle rounds. Ultimately, the uniforms the men wore would not have swayed the Malayan campaign either way, but they did emphasise the need for a complete rethink of the approach to jungle warfare in the Second World War. So with the history out of the way, it's time to start the painting. This is my technique for getting figures on the table quickly, so don't expect any finesse here. As I'm using these figures for chain of command, I base them as singles, using a 15mm diameter MDF base from War Bases. I super glue the figures to the base and then use polyfiller to build up around the figure's stand. I use a flat headed screwdriver to do this and let it dry, preferably overnight if possible. Once the polyfiller is completely dry, I undercoat the model. To kill two birds with one stone, I use the base coat of the uniform for this and I apply German camo beige by a Vallejo as my base coat. I completely cover the figure and ensure that all the nooks and crannies are filled in. You might want to do two coats just to ensure that this happens. I'll also put a list of the paints that I use in the video in the description down below. 
Next, I paint the flesh. This is the face, the arms and the knees where you can see them. I'm painting these as Caucasian British men, but some of the Indian units also wore helmets, such as the Gurkhas, so you could paint a darker skin tone to replicate this. Here, I'm just using Vallejo's skin tone. Then, I paint the helmet and the socks. Now, I do both of these in Vallejo's English uniform. Some of the helmets were painted in bronze green as well, but I like the look of these brown helmets. The boots are next, and these are just painted in black. I don't worry about being too neat, as I can always go back later and repair any areas that I've painted over. I'm just concentrating on block colouring at this stage. With the boots dry, I then paint the base in flat earth. This is also again by Vallejo. I try to be as neat as I can around the boots, but I use a medium sized brush to get this done quickly. Now it's time to paint the base coat for the 37 pattern webbing, and for this I'm using khaki grey. This is just to give the webbing and backpack a bit of depth, ready for the highlighting later. Wood, including the rifle, is painted in beige brown. This looks great once it's also been washed in Agrax Earthshade. And the very last thing for the block painting is painting any metal parts in gunmetal grey. In this case, this is the rifle barrel and the bolts, if I can see it. Once the figure is dry, I wash the model in Agrax Earthshade. This is by Citadel Miniatures and I make sure to get it into all the nooks and crannies of the figure. If it pulls too much, I'll just use my brush to draw it away from the area affected. With the block painting finished and the wash dry, it's then time to begin the highlighting. So I go back to the flesh, and using the original base colour, I just paint the highest raised areas. For this, I use a very small brush and try not to cover everything, just the highest parts. Using Vallejo Stone Grey, I then paint the highlights on the shirts and the shorts, this is a nice colour against the original base coat, and it also makes a uniform look worn and sun bleached, which would happen quickly in the climate of Malaya. I paint the helmet in English uniform again, but just the top and the rim, just to give it a bit of depth. I don't bother with highlighting the socks though, because I want them to be slightly darker than the helmet itself. The webbing and the backpack gets a highlight in Vallejo's hemp. This is a slightly similar colour to stone grey, but it's different enough just to create a contrast especially with the original dark base coat that I used. Once I've finished highlighting, I varnish the figure, and for this I'm using Vallejo's matte brush on varnish. Use whatever you like here, but just ensure that your figure is protected from scratches and bumps whilst gaming. Then finally, I finish off the base using a layer of undiluted PVA glue, sprinkled over with static grass. I don't use an applicator for this, as just blowing on the grass before the PVA is dried will make it stand up anyway. And there you have it, a platoon of British for Malaya or Singapore, finished in no time. This is a very quick method of painting, and there's really no subtlety to it, as I mentioned, but it will get you a force on the table in quick time. They're not going to win any Golden Demon Awards, but they will fight bravely. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a like and a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already.